Hello and welcome to Knit Grit. My name is Cody Lee and in today's video we're going to go over how to make this cute little mini ghost. So it is Halloween season. We are in October and as you can probably uh, guess my one of my best videos right now is the main ghost that I did. I have a tutorial on this that I did last season. It's already up and I'll have that link down below if you're interested in making this cute little mama ghost but I wanted to make a cute little mini ghost as well because I think it's stinking cute and I'm gonna be giving these out as well as some of my spiders a tutorial I did last week in my, uh, my my candy bins for all the kids this year so I'm excited and I really wanted to show this little tiny cute miniature ghost I might be making some more mini things but next week we're gonna be working on these cute little bats that are in the background and I still do need to make this plushy spider so all of that is coming out this this is now this is already out this is now that's already out and I'm gonna be working on the bat and the plushy spider sometime in October Try to keep me honest on that though and, and actually comment on there to remind me because sometimes I forget if it's not already up. So let's go ahead and get started. So for this project, you will need some worsted weight yarn. You could do this with a like plushy yarn. I feel like you're probably going to have to go around for more rounds during the body. But other than that, you can use plushy yarn when you're doing this pattern. Just make sure to go down a couple sizes and to test swatch without the size hook that you're using. I usually when I'm using plush yarn, uh, I'll read the wrapper and whatever the size hook it calls for, I'll go down one or two sizes from that. So this, however, is the I Love This Cotton by Hobby Lobby. This is just in white, and there is also a white sparkle in case you're interested in making it in that color. I really, really like this yarn. It is great to use cotton when you're making your amigurumi. It stretches less, and it hides your polyfill a little bit better on the inside. You may also want to have some black yarn in the same yarn or just have embroidery or you could even do what I did in my original uh, ghost video. I just did 3D fabric paint on that. I had some leftover black yarn from a spider or a bat I was making and so I just used the extra to make a little tiny mouth and if you kind of pull it down like that it looks like he's smiling and I love it. All right you will also need some eyes. I'm going to be using the cute little eyes that I got in my spider tutorial. I'm going to be using this. I have links for this down below uh, on Amazon. It's not my favorite for backings, but I want to use them and see how they look so people can see the differences. I think these are super duper cute and I'm going to be using these eyes. Links again down below. These are between like a 10 and 12 millimeter. They're not very large and I think that they will fit the body on this fairly well. I think it's super cute. I may have to sand down that. They're cheap eyes so. We are also using a size 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. This is my beautiful Furls Odyssey crochet hook. Anything will do though really. This is uh, my favorite crochet hook but a Susan Bates or a boys or whatever uh, crochet hook you use will work just fine. You will also need some polyfill. Very small amount. Probably a little bit more than the spider but not like you can probably make like three of these little guys with what you use in this. Get a pound bag and you'll be able to make a ton of them. I'm also using some cute little scissors and I'm also using a darning needle. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So I posted the pattern right there, but there will be a printable PDF version of this. Make sure you click on the link down below to get that for free on our Ravelry. We have a PDF on there for the first week and it will then go to $3 after that. All right, so a few things to make note of before we start this video. We are going to be working in the round which is fairly typical. Um, we're also going to be working through the front loop only. That matters when it comes to our little ghosty on his backside here. With plush yarn, that's a little bit harder to do, but we are going to be working through the front loop only in order to pick up those back stitches when we get down to the bottom of our little guy. It's more important when we're working around and around and around when we get through the front loop only, but for consistency sake, I'm gonna be working through the front loop only. So I'm going to create my magic ring the way that I always do, which is to chain two. However your magic ring method is, that's just what you're going to want to do, but this is how I do mine. So we're going to skip this second chain that I just made and go back into the first, and I'm treating that as my magic ring. I'm going to wrap and wrap, 
I yarn under for my style for amigurumi, but if you yarn over, that is all up to you. I think yarn under, so yarn under versus yarn over. I just went over this in my last video. I think that this looks a lot better for amigurumi and it will hide your stitches a bit better. So yarn under, yarn under, yarn under, yarn under. We're placing six stitches inside of our magic ring. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Pull your tail and that will bring it all in. Another thing that I do when it comes to my second row now is I have this tail and if I kind of just let it be and I let it just sit, it probably won't do anything. But what I like to do is I'm gonna go through the front loop only, right there, and I'm gonna wrap my tail up and act as if it is a piece of my stitches. I'm then going to put an increase in every single one of these stitches for row two. So an increase is when you place two stitches within a single stitch from the previous round. We're gonna go into the next stitch now that I have two in that one. One, and still keeping my tail as if it is a piece of my work the entire time. Go into the third stitch, put two stitches, so one, two. Go into the fourth, one, two, go into the fifth, keeping my tail in front in the middle of all these stitches the entire time. One, two, you can see the two little bumps right there. And then the final sixth stitch. We're essentially going from six stitches up to 12. We're doing the exact same increasing that we did with our spider. He's the same size and I think it's super cute. I ended up getting these really adorable little lights from the Dollar Tree and I think they're so adorable and they were a dollar. So I'm putting them in the background of all my videos now. <laughs> so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 stitches on our work and now we're going on to row 3. And we're going to be going from 12 up to 18. Essentially we're adding 6 stitches every single round and we're going to evenly space out our stitches every time that we increase. So 1. We're going to single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, increase in order to get from that 12 up to 18. Increase the next stitch, one, increase the next stitch, one, increase the next stitch, one, we're doing this six times total. Increase the next stitch. One. Increase the next stitch. I think this is the fifth repetition. And our final repetition. One. And increase. Now, what I like to do here is I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We are at 18 stitches now. I'm going to actually pull this out for a second. I'm going to take my hook, put it through the stitch, and I'm going to grab my tail. And we're going to treat that as a stitch marker. I like to always bring those up front because I lose all my stitch markers. So why not just use my tail? So now what we're going to do is on row 4, we're going to increase from 18 to 24. This is our final increase round. But what I like to do whenever I'm doing my increases, and I have a video on this as well, it's in my Beginners 101 uh, playlist, is I like to do something called staggering. My yarn's all messed up. I like to do something called staggering versus stacking my increases. When you stack them, all your increases essentially line up on top of each other. But when you stagger them, you make it so that they are not lined up perfectly. And I like staggering them because I find that it makes it look a bit more hidden honestly you don't see the increases as much and I also find that the amigurumi ends up rounder looking so how you stagger is usually you would single crochet one two increase after your single crochet one increase round now we're on row four we're going to single crochet one and increase and then single crochet one this offsets it so that single crochet one is above your increase from the previous round. And do that one more time. So single crochet one, increase, 
single crochet one. And what you're doing there, you're still putting two stitches between your increases, it just offsets it. So you're still increasing the same amount, it just looks a little bit more offset, a little bit more rounder, and you can't see your increases as much. It's subtle, you don't have to, if you just want to single crochet two and increase this round, you are free to do it, but I personally prefer it this way. So one, two, and then, so one, and then increase, excuse me, and then one. One, increase, one, one, increase, one, and our final increase, one, increase, one. Move your tail forward, pull that out a little bit. And now what we're going to do is for rows 5 through 10, we're going to single crochet around. Just for 6 rounds, we're going to maintain those 24 stitches and go around and around and around and around and around and around. Just 6 times we're going to go around and that's essentially going to create the height of our body. And I'll be right back as soon as I get that done. We're maintaining our stitches, our 24 stitches all the way down. And then I'll show you how we make this cute little wobbly ghost bottom. All right, so I've gone around my six rounds and I've gone for the entire body essentially. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the eyes at this point. So I like to kind of center it so that my um, my start is over here and essentially it's going down the center on the back side. And I like to try to center my eyes along the front that way when you see where it ends and it begins, it's mostly on the back side. I hope that makes sense. But what we're going to do is we're going to go up three rows like that and kind of wiggle them in. I'm going to try to get this so that its eye is going the right direction. There we go. I want it going from the left. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, going up one, two, three, up right there. Might be a little too far apart. Let me see real quick. Yeah, no, I like the spacing on that. It looks about three stitches apart. One, two, three, which is what I'm going for. We're then going to take our backs and try to snap that on. Do the same thing on the other side. Snap that on. So those are my eyes, and I'm pretty happy with that, honestly. I wish I had thought, I wish I had actually gotten this off. Oh, never mind, I got it off with my nail. Okay. I'll take it. That works. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go on to row 11. So on row 11, we're going to be making this cute little ridge. And how we go about that is we're going to grab our hook onto our work again. I'm going to try to avoid my uh, little ends here. And we're going to put four single crochet inside the first stitch of row 11. So one two, three, four, then we're going to skip and slip stitch going through the front loop only still on the third stitch. Now we're going to repeat that four stitches inside the first stitch repetition, one, two, oops, two, three, four, skip, slip, one, two, three, four, skip, slip, one, two, three, four, and we're going to do this the entire way around essentially for uh, eight repetitions skip slip and i'm going to keep doing that all the way around and we're on the last repetition one two three four 
skip, slip. But this time I'm going to go through both. And I'm then going to also, I'm going to go through both. And then I'm also going to kind of slip into the first back loop back here along the back ridge. This makes it easier for us to transition into our row 12, essentially. I'm going to actually fix that because I split the yarn. Let's try that one more time. So this is my fourth stitch repetition. Skip, slip, slip. Try not to split. There we go, slip. And now I'm gonna chain one to kind of get myself working over there. And essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to, for row 12, we're going to go through the back loops of row 10. And we're going to single crochet into the first three back loops. So one, two, three. Right into these back loops behind. And we're going to skip the fourth loop. So skip one, two, three, skip, one, two, three, skip, one, two, three, skip, one, two, three, e, skip, one, two, three, e, and essentially your skip is kind of right there, but what I like to do is I'm going to skip over our last ridge and we're going to go over into the first single crochet from round 12 essentially. And we're going to go through both loops just to make it nice and easy. For this one piece, I find that it makes it a little bit neater looking and less of a hole. That counts as the first single crochet of round 13. And for round 13, in order to start closing this up, we're going to single crochet one, already did our first one, and we're going to decrease. And how I decrease is I put my hook through the front loops of the two stitches that I'm going to decrease, and then I single crochet as if it is one piece. So one, single crochet, decrease like so. One, and decrease. I think I'm going to pause real quick and before I get too far ahead in trying to close this up I am going to put some stuffing inside just to you know help it along we're gonna start stuffing a little bit and I like to try to get stuffing in between the eyes that way they don't get warped and weird looking I do think I should have put the eyes just one row up but I still think it's pretty cute I think it would make it look a little bit cuter if it was a little higher. I think if you put it between rows four, four up instead, it'd be a lot better looking. I'm gonna keep going on for the rest of this round. I just like getting the bulk of it in just so that I can make sure that it is mostly stuffed. I'd like to stuff the least, like as far ahead as I can because otherwise I end up crocheting a ton of polyfill into my stitches and that is not fun. If I can minimize that then I will. Decrease. One. Decrease. And one. It's hard to see now. Decrease. We're gonna add some more stuffing because this big part here needs it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Try to squish it, make sure that you don't have any lumps that are not doing what you don't want them to do. And for row 14, we're finishing off. We're going to decrease every 
single stitch. I always try to kind of tug a little bit tighter during this row just to make sure that it's all nice and taut so that it doesn't show too many stitches. With the white amigurumi, it's not as noticeable because the polyfill is the same color, so I'm not too worried about the polyfill showing through. I'm going to do this fifth decrease, and then we have one more decrease, but I like to do that a little bit differently. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches left, so we have one more decrease. I like to skip the first stitch and then go into the last stitch, like so. Slip stitch off. I'm going to create a decently long, like six inch long tail, and I'm going to pull that through, like so. I am going to pull my tail. I was using as a stitch marker off, kind of just cut it so I don't have to deal with it. And now I'm going to put my darning needle to use and I'm going to put that on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close up this amigurumi. This is my favorite method for closing up my amigurumi. I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm going to put it into the first stitch going from the front towards the center and pull through. And I'm going to do that for every single stitch. So turn, pull through. Turn, pull through, turn, center, turn, turn. And then this is our last stitch right here. And with our last stitch, we're then going to turn, and put our darning needle into the center where it's open and whip it through kind of the top as far away as you can and then tug it and that pulls them all in. It's perfect. And then I like to take my tail and go again at a different angle, kind of like that. That way it's going in at two different points and it's not as likely to fall out. All right, so next up, we're gonna work on the little mini arms. So you can totally omit this if you don't like this, but I really think that these are super cute. I make these little tiny mini arms on my little mini ghost and I really like it, but the hard thing about it is it's a little flat thing. So to sew it, I like that it pops and I haven't figured out a better way to sew this other than to attach it and then add a little tiny bit of fabric glue or hot glue and then pressing it so it just kind of stays on, it adheres, you have something to stick it on with and I'll show you how I get the strings to hide as well. But essentially, it's super easy. We're gonna create a magic ring again, but create a, six to eight inch long tail create your little slip knot go in here like so and we're going to do our magic ring again where we go one two chain go back inside the first and we're going to add five single crochet inside two three four and five you're gonna to wanna to pull your tail like so. And then we're gonna put our hook inside both stitches, both parts of the same stitch for our first stitch right here. Wrap and slip stitch off. Keep this nice and taut. And that is essentially the look we're going for. Make your tails similarly sized. Pull that through. Like so, grab your first tail, your original tail that's poking up from the back, and put it on your darning needle. Now, line this up with where you want your arm to be centered. I put it about three stitches up from the eyes on the right side and also on the left side. So here, one, two, three, right around there. I'm going to poke it out kind of the side here so it's out over. And pull that all the way through. Am I happy with how that looks? There, I'm happy with how that looks like that. There we go. So we're gonna take this and then take our last one and go through from the front towards the center of the body. Kind of just wiggle it through wherever you're happy with it. Pull that through. And that is pretty much it for the arms. I like how this looks. I think it's super cute. And I'm going to go take a hot glue gun real quick and just make sure that these are adhered how I want them to be. Essentially, I'm going to pull up this little side here, put a little dab of glue on the inside of it and press it down and hold it on there. I'm going to do that for both of them. And then I'm going to come back and show you how I do the mouth real quick. 
be right back. All right, so I took some hot glue, it's on the inside, and I pulled that in. You could probably take some fabric glue as well, and that would work just as well, in my opinion. So now I'm gonna take just a little bit of a black string, I've got some yarn right here, and I'm going to add it on to my mouth, essentially. So what I do is I go from the bottom, that way it's not super apparent. I'm gonna go up here between right here why not i think i'm gonna put it right there and right there i'm literally going to go i'm gonna hold on to that and pull that through it does not need to be there we go and then i'm gonna take it over here and i'm gonna go back down across and then that looks like just a, a min face but if you kind of pin it down it'll look cute just like that i think that if you just kind of pull on it, it makes it look like a smile and then i just kind of cut it and let it exist as it is right there you could take some again fabric glue if that's something that you're interested in I always kind of wiggle along the bottom and always kind of re-angle it however I want it and that's pretty much it that is all you need to do in order to make this cute little mini ghost let me know what you'd like to see next again I already have the spider up I already have this cute little ghost up and I just made this ridiculously adorable candy corn bat so I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to do just the base bat I think I'm going to do a gray version of this one I love how I had to redo the ears originally the ears uh I kept on thinking that they didn't look quite right not quite but I like how these ears look better I'm going to include both ears in the tutorial in case for whatever reason you have fallen in love with this one but I do think that this the brown bat's ears look a little bit better than the gray bat. Let me know what you think of the bat tutorial down below if you want to see that next or whether or not you'd like to see maybe a plush version of this ghost or a plush version of the spider up next. Again, I think these are all ridiculously cute and I love Halloween. This is my season. I'm so excited to be able to give these out with the candy this year. Uh, we're going to be doing socially distanced trick-or-treating this year, so I'm going to put a little basket of candy out for the kids this year. I'm so excited for Halloween. It is... I've been waiting for October, like, for the last, let's be real, six months. I'm wicked excited. All right, well, thank you for watching this video, and before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. I gained three Patreon supporters this week. I don't know what or who shared... I don't know, but thank you so much for becoming my patrons. I'm so excited. If you are interested in becoming a patron, go ahead and go over to patreon.com slash knit and you can see the different rewards that we have, a lot of free patterns and stuff like that. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell before you leave so you can be notified when I post new patterns and you can get your free printable PDF on Ravelry. The code for that is linked down below. And until next time, guys, bye.